Hey everyone, Brian here from Astrolips 2000 and today I'm bringing you guys a video on the Red Cat 51 using the uh, new L Ultimate filter. Well, it's not really new, but it's new to me. Uh, for the last few years I've been shooting with the 2600 uh, mm mono camera and recently I picked up a ZWO 2600 MC actually used from ZWL. Got a sweet deal on it. So I've been using that and I haven't, I've been shooting a RGB with no filter with it. And like I said, I picked up the uh, L Ultimate. I got a good deal on it. I did have the L Extreme in the past and I got some pretty good images with that. Tonight I'm gonna be shooting Cygnus Loop, the whole Thing. I'm shooting at wide field with the Red Cat 51 and the reason I decided to make a video on the Red Cat 51 is because it's it's one of my favorite telescopes I mean I've seen them used now on cloudy nights for $500 which is a bargain I think I paid around a thousand dollars for it and there's been some revisions to the scope um, it's had some changes to the type of focuser that's in there I think I have the v2 um, but this one actually autofocuses the best with the ASI Air. I actually get not what looks like a U curve, but a real V curve with this. I use uh, the EAF kit from Agena Astro. It's a 3D printed kit. It has a little cat face right there, whiskers, and the bolts are the eyes. But it works very well. Um, shooting with the Red Cat on the AM5. You can see here, extremely lightweight and carried outside just like this. And if you're shooting with the Red Cat with the EAF, a little tip I can give you is this lock ring right here. You sh first, I'd leave it really loose, and then the, fo the scope would lose focus extremely fast. Uh, so then I realized that I have to just kind of leave this lock ring kind of snug, not tight, but just snug, and then it will hold focus. No problem. I don't know if you ever realized how small the Red Cat is, but let me just take the do here off and show you guys. That's it. Pretty much the same size as the guide scope. Red Cat's 51 millimeters, and this is an Orion 50 millimeter guide scope. Let me just get this back on. The ZWO 2600MC with their filter drawer, like I said, with the uh, L Ultimate in there. And I'm going to be using the ASI Air Plus to run the setup. So let me see a few things that I may have missed on the scope here. Just go. It does have a rotator back here. Loosen that up and the camera can spin around. Um, it's pretty fast. It's f4.9. And I have the you know, APS-C uh, crop size sensor in here so it gets nice crisp stars edge to edge. Um, and like I said, it's it's a nice telescope for definitely for a beginner. You can, uh, it's got a nice wide field so you don't have to have a huge mount to get this thing to track great. Right? And it's got a wide field so it's pretty forgiving uh, when you're tracking. And I don't have any issues with tilt. The focuser is all internally built in, so it can hold large weights from cameras, filter wheels. You don't have to worry about tilt or sag. Um, so of all the telescopes I've had, this one has given me the least issues. It was probably the cheapest, so that's why I wanted to mention it. It's a great scope if you're just starting out in Astro. Okay, so once I get this set up, I'll bring you guys back. Talk to you soon. Hey everyone, I'm back. I'm out here shooting. I have the Explore Scientific set up on the AM5, the ASI 2600mm, shooting Ghost Cassiopeia over there. And over here I have the Red Cat, almost at Meridian already, on the AM5 with the 2600mc color with the L Ultimate. And guys, the first sub just rolled in and I'm pretty happy give you guys a better shot of this on the screen uh, but dang it's pretty good so
So I'm just going to get both of these rolling, let them keep shooting for the night, and uh, see what we get uh, shooting for final results with the L Ultimate. See you guys soon. Okay, I'm pretty stoked. I was able to finally get dig into the data that I collected using the Red Cat 51, the L Ultimate, and the ZWO 2600MC, which is a one-shot color camera. Um, the L Ultimate is a three nanometer dual band filter that collects oxygen and hydrogen data at the same time. So let's dig in and uh, see what we got. Not that with a pretty bright moon, but that's supposed to be the point of this filter, I guess. So I really wanted to put it to the test. But with the moon aside, the overall nebula in the image does, it's very sharp. Um, again, I don't know if that's necessarily the filter, but I do love the red cat because for its size, it does produce very crisp images. So let's zoom this image out. Now, I wanted to have something to compare this to. So it's not necessarily uh, apples to apples, so please don't beat me up in the comments too bad. But about two years ago, I did shoot the same target with the Radian Raptor, which is a 61 millimeter telescope versus the Red Cat, which is a 51 millimeter with the L Extreme. Uh, and that's this image right here. And when I checked the stats on the image, it's roughly five hours. So they're both roughly the same exposure time. And they were both shot under a 70% moon. Now, you could see that the moon was obviously, when I, this was shot, not so close to the target as it was over here. So the L Ultimate actually has a few things going against it. If I were to put these two against each other, it was shot with a 10 millimeter smaller aperture telescope. And the moon obviously was a lot more hardcore uh, in this image that you can see comparatively over here. But if you could put the horrible gradient from the moon aside, if you can look at the fine details in the image, you can immediately see the L extreme going to work here on the background, the HA here, on all this, these fine filaments. You can see how it really picked them up very nicely. So let's get rid of that ugly one with the moon. And this was after DPE. And this was after DB. And I rotated it so that they were roughly the same orientation to uh, make our not apples to apples comparisons here. So again, right away, you could see this fine filament, this outer loop of HA here that the L extreme picked up very nicely. Um, let's go to my favorite part of this nebula, which is the witch's broom. Whoops. So let's grab, let's put these two side by side and see how they roughly look. I'm not sure if you know that trick, but if you have two images side by side and you click the edge, drag it and drop it on top of the other icon, it will match the image. It's not exactly here because again, they're not the same scope and stacked together, but they're pretty close. But you can definitely see, um, overall, I think they both look great. Uh, but I can immediately tell that the fine filament here that it was able to pick up on the ultimate versus the extreme, it definitely looks better. And I forgot to mention that they were both stacked in PixInsight. So uh, this is an, an old stack to compare them. And let's check over here at the, the other area I noticed was the triangle. And you could tell this, the extreme just has that uh, punch uh, in the data. But for one shot color with these filters, these are both work amazingly well. And again, let's go down here and compare this part. And you can really see the fine filament here in the HA that the L Ultimate picked up. And then if we go in a little closer, you could, I mean, this one definitely looks way more crisp. I mean, I guess you could say this one was out of focus, but I mean, it was shot with a, you know, autofocus and 
all that back then too. So again, I know it's not apples to apples, but it does give you an idea. Both are extremely impressive. Uh, maybe with the extreme and some more exposure time, it could pick up this faint detail that the ultimate was able to pick up. All right, so let me minimize these two and show you the final processed image. So here's the L extreme and then the L ultimate. So we can go into my favorite area here, which is the witch's broom. You can see the difference. It's much more crisp looking. And this, the star spikes is from Star Spikes Pro. I just playing with that. I'm not sure if I'll actually keep that in the image. Uh, that's a plugin for Photoshop. But even over here, if we come to this area, you could see just the fine filaments, much more detail on them. And these were both recently processed. So I tried processing them both the same, except for the star spikes. Uh, but again, look at that outer filament on the final processed image. You can really notice it here when the stars are pushed back a little bit. So I'll show you guys up on the screen the final processed image. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video and give you an idea of the power of both these filters, the L Ultimate or uh, the L Extreme. Both work amazingly well, especially under uh, moonlit conditions. So, all right. Thanks for watching, everyone.